Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit more about Mars, our beautiful red neighbor, and we're going to actually talk about various mysteries about this red planet, some of which we have actually been able to kind of solve, but most of which we have no idea what they're all about. Anyway, in this video you're going to learn about this beautiful planet and some of the mysteries that still remain. Welcome to What The Math. So, of course, Mars has been in the news lately, mostly because Elon Musk announced that he actually created or is about to create a rocket that's going to travel here to, in 2022 and hopefully bring humanity to this beautiful planet. Who is going to be the first man on Mars? Well, I guess future will show. If you're watching this in 2022 and you guys have already landed on Mars, uh, cool, you know, awesome. Tell us who it is. I guess we all know who it is by then. But, uh, you know, this video has been made six years prior to that landing, and so we don't really know who it is just yet. But anyway, in this video, I wanted to really talk about the mysteries of this beautiful planet and kind of discuss some of the possible explanations. Let's start with number one. Now, this uh, has been known as the Red Planet for a very long time, and actually the Chinese uh, astronomers used to refer to this as the Fire Planet because it was basically so red in the sky back then that it looked like it was on fire. Uh, but uh, the biggest mystery of this so-called Red Planet or Fire Planet is that it actually has very, very unique features on uh, both of its uh, hemispheres. So this Northern Hemisphere is actually very, very different from the Southern Hemisphere. As a matter of fact, it's kind of hard to see here, but it's a lot easier if I actually start adding things like water to it. If I were to add uh, liquid, or I guess ice water here, if I were to start adding ice, you would see that um, the upper part gets covered with water right away. It's basically entirely covered with water, whereas the uh, Southern part is not. So this seems to be kind of a very shallow area. It's like someone basically took their big thumbnail or thumb and just squeeze this part in leaving the bottom part of Mars, the southern part of Mars, uh, completely untouched. And it's actually very interesting that the southern part of Mars is a lot more highly elevated than the northern part. And uh, furthermore, the northern hemisphere is actually one of the most smoothest um, areas in our solar system. It's actually so smooth that today's scientists think that something very, very large must have done this must have come from the top and collided onto the surface of Mars, creating a kind of a bulge. Now, it may have not been as big as what I just sent to Mars. It may actually have been something a little bit smaller, something like this. And that sort of left um, a very interesting bulge on top here that basically created a very smooth surface, whereas the bottom of the southern hemisphere remained the same. But other than this explanation, we don't really know what exactly happened because we haven't really been to Mars yet to study it in a lot of detail. And the few robots that are living on Mars right now haven't actually explored this area very much. Now, the mystery number two is in relation to what we've actually discovered from the few probes that we sent to Mars. And that's something, unfortunately, is not represented here, but it's basically an organic material, which I should probably add in here. So we've actually discovered that Mars seems to have a bunch of methane orbiting around it, or basically there's a methane um, that seems to come off from the surface and basically escapes into the upper atmosphere, and we've been able to detect this methane. Uh, now, I'm basically representing this as a green orbiting sphere around uh, Mars, but we don't really know where it's coming from. We're not exactly sure where this methane is from and what has created it, because usually methane is created by animals on Earth, or, you know, life. If there is life on Mars, it would explain why methane is there, but if there is no life, what is actually creating it? Now, um, on Earth, we actually uh, have detected methane coming out of volcanoes as well, so volcanoes can technically produce methane as well, but we haven't really seen many volcanoes on Mars. As a matter of fact, it's currently volcanically inactive. There, There is a very large volcano that is actually the biggest volcano um, in the solar system right here, uh, Olympus Mons, or wait, no, sorry, that's right here, Olympus Mons. That was a totally wrong volcano. Uh, it's the biggest mountain, it's the biggest uh, volcano in the solar system, but as you can see, it's dead. I mean, it's sleeping, it's dormant, it's not working really right now. So where is this methane from? We don't know. Because if it actually remained from when this volcano was active, that would be kind of impossible. Methane doesn't really last very long. It, uh, maximum um, time it would last in the Martian atmosphere, due, mostly due to the sunlight um, interaction and due to the other effects, would be about 300 years. So either there was a volcano 300 years ago on Mars that released the methane somehow and produced it basically, or 
there is possibly something else going on, potentially some sort of a life uh, that is creating these beautiful green uh, particles that you see orbiting around the planet. The third mystery is in regards to the liquid water on Mars. Now, we have recently discovered that maybe, just maybe, there is actually a little bit of liquid water that is basically something that we call brine water. It's basically very, very, very salty, very saline water that is still flowing on the surface of Mars. And we've detected some of the effects of that liquid water uh, based on the observations from different satellites. But other than that, we don't really know if there is a possibility for actual liquid water right now. There's obviously uh, these tracks of potential water from the past and uh, some of the um, shorelines that are still visible on Mars from days a uh, long, long time ago, billions of years ago, actually, when there was still water. But right now, we've only discovered a few patches of potential liquid water, and the only explanation for it, due to the low pressure on, on, on the Martian surface, is that it has to be really, really, really salty. It has to be saline liquid that would create these really dark, narrow lines seen on the Martian slopes uh, that would basically be super, super salty uh, seawater. But once again, until we actually go there and look for it, uh, we don't really know if it actually exists or if something like some kind of a strange wind actually forms these uh, formations. Now, next mystery is in regards to uh, liquid water in the past. Now, we have a feeling, a very strong feeling that there was liquid water. As a matter of fact, we've seen uh, tracks of tsunamis, um, two mega tsunamis, as a matter of fact, about which I've talked about previously in one of the previous videos. Um, we've seen all of this on the surface of Mars. Now, let me actually just restart this Mars here just so I can show you where we think the water actually was. So that's basically the ancient uh, seashores of Mars. This is maybe what it looked like a long time ago, but the only evidence we have is, of course, from observations of the seashore formations and the um, giveaway sort of signs that there must have been a tsunami at some point, which was very likely caused by something crashing onto the surface of Mars, which was, once again, uh, why maybe Mars has such a flattened surface right here. But one problem with this uh, idea is that, well, first of all, this would have been a long time ago when our sun was not very powerful. It wouldn't actually have provided enough uh, warmth for Mars to have liquid water. The other thing is that, well, for, th for the water to exist here, Mars would have actually have to have really, really, really uh, um, high at atmospheric pressure and or possibly this would have to be really salty water. So what this would suggest is that a long time ago, billions of years ago, Mars was kind of cold, but wet. Basically, it had really, really strange conditions of liquid water, but also cold temperatures. Now, what happened to water afterwards? We don't really know, but it's very likely that due to the lack of magnetosphere, which Mars doesn't actually have, a lot of water was actually destroyed by the sunlight and escaped into the outer solar system, where it probably just ended up on some other moon or planet, or maybe even came back to Earth. But nevertheless, uh, the only evidence we have about these liquid oceans uh, of the past is essentially the seashore formation that you can kind of see, because if I were to remove this, you would see that there's actually a bit of a seashore-like formation right here, which is different from this area. Now, all in all, we don't really know once again until we go and explore, but for now, that's what we understand about this beautiful planet. And of course, the biggest mystery is, well, is there actually life on Mars? And of course, we won't be able to answer that for quite a while. Yes, we've seen methane, yes, we've seen liquid water, which is usually a requirement for life. But is there, is there actually life there, or is there not life? And we've actually seen so many different signs of this uh, life, or potential life, um, in the atmosphere of this beautiful planet. So here I am adding a bunch of various molecules that we've detected in the atmosphere. And basically what we've seen so far, what we've been able to detect is um, things like methyl chloride and dichloromethane, which are actually organic molecules that are usually associated with life on Earth. However, when we've detected them the first time, they were kind of dismissed as potential contamination from Earth. Basically, maybe just maybe we actually brought them with us to Mars. But for all we know, they were actually created on Mars as well. And also, one of the biggest problems with even having life on Mars is, of course, the fact that it's a very cold, very dry, very highly radiated um, planet that is would be very, very difficult to survive on. As a matter of fact, it's even more hostile than the Antarctica on Earth, where, um, well, technically we do have life there, but on Mars, uh, the problem is, of course, the very, very high radiation coming from the sun. 
So if there's any life living on this planet, it's probably hidden underneath the uh, layers of Martian soil and not really on the surface. So even if we actually launch the first mission to Mars with people on it, we might not actually be able to detect it until we uh, dig really, really deep into the Martian soil and try to look for life there. But based on what we uh, know about our own planet Earth, we know that as long as there's liquid, doesn't matter where it is, as long as there's liquid water, uh, there is usually life. It, we found life pretty much everywhere where there is water. So if we find water, liquid water on Mars, and if that saline water I mentioned previously is real, there's a very high chance that there is actually life on Mars as well, which also brings us to the next mystery. And the next mystery is, well, did life on Earth actually originate on this beautiful planet Mars? Now, we will obviously not be able to find out for quite some time, but there were so many signs that maybe, just maybe, this would be true based on the so-called theory called panspermia, basically creation of life outside of Earth. Now, we've actually received quite a lot of meteorites from Mars when something like a random asteroid decides to actually collide with Mars and then releases a bunch of uh, miniature asteroids that then end up landing on our planet Earth. Now, it happened quite a lot of times. Uh, one of the more famous ones is called ALH84001. I've talked about this previously, but basically it was an asteroid from Mars that uh, we found and we thought that it would actually contain life. And that was because inside that asteroid we found um, something that looked like it was created by uh, organic life. But we also realized that maybe just maybe this is just a, a kind of a really complex chemical uh, reaction that could be also occurring due to the actual collision with Mars. So maybe something collided with such force that it created those chemical uh, components. And so, once again, there's just so many signs pointing at the fact that um, there might be life on Mars and maybe even it came to Earth and started um, life on Earth, but until we discover it on Mars, we won't really know. And I guess the last mystery here is, of course, in relation to, well, is this the future phase of Earth? Is Earth going to become like this in, in the future? Now, we know almost for a fact that Mars used to be a lot, a lot nicer. It actually kind of looked like this. So here's my best attempt at terraforming Mars. Basically, it's an Earth-like planet with a lot of liquid water, with uh, water clouds, uh, water vapor clouds, and it's about 76% Earth-like. This was billions of years ago. And it was very, very Earth-like before. So this is actually one of the reasons why we think maybe, just maybe, life did originate here and then came to Earth. Because back then, Earth was not particularly hospitable just yet. Especially because it received a collision from um, a, a tiny planet that created our moon. So it was still kind of developing and growing and becoming more hospitable to life. But Mars was already hospitable to life. So we think maybe life started here. Or maybe it was Venus, but very likely it was actually Mars. If this is true, does that mean that uh, because Mars and Earth are so similar, is Earth actually going to become this in the future? And if that happens, how can we actually avoid it? How can we maintain uh, Earth-like appearance of our Earth and prevent it from turning into, into this really strange dry rock with very inhospitable conditions? Now, one of the uh, problems is, of course, the fact that Mars doesn't have um, magnetic uh, magnetosphere, magnetic field, but maybe just maybe it's something that Mars used to have. And if it did have it, how did it lose it? So there's a lot of questions that we still have about this beautiful planet. And a lot of these questions will actually influence our future as a human race as well, because if we expect to survive and live on this beautiful planet, also known as Earth, i.e. your home, we need to actually understand both Venus and Mars that used to be like this, and then something just went wrong. So we need to try to find a way to avoid this from happening on our planet, because for all we know, maybe just maybe, Earth too is going to lose all of its water, and then eventually start drying out, lose a lot of its atmosphere because it's going to lose a lot of its surface pressure and basically have almost no atmosphere at all and eventually just turn into this kind of a arid and also very 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 cold and inhospitable place that you're about to see in a second as soon as I decrease the temperature and so maybe this is going to be earth in the future so here we go let's actually add a little bit of more water because you'll actually see the snow caps and everything and frozen water 
and eventually it's basically going to turn into a very inhospitable, very dark and gloomy place that will eventually also lose all of this water as well because it's actually going to very likely slowly disappear and turn into that. So how do I avoid this? Let's go to Mars and find out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this with your friends or someone who you think might like these videos and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to learn something else. If you still haven't subscribed, the subscribe button is right there, just click on it. Come on, just do it, do it. Thank you. Anyway, I'll see you guys later, game you later and as always, bye bye.